Welcome to the King's Rock Assembly of God. All right. I see there's some first time visitors, so I just want to welcome you to the King's Rock Assembly of God. Um, I am, uh, if you know me, I'm the associate pastor here. Uh, my name is Pastor Charlie Brown. It's for the last thing, so I'm real name is Charles Brown. But, um, and Pastor Jim Tracy is the senior pastor here. Let's pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, I just thank you, Lord God, for all that you're doing. Mm -hmm. Lord God, we know that you stand on the throne, and Lord God, everything that happens has to, to go through you first, Lord God. And we just thank you, Lord God, that we know, Lord God, for sure, so that, Lord God, that we can rest in you. Thank and you. I just ask you, Lord God, that just thank you, Lord God, for the music that we know that we can stand in you. And I just ask you just to continue to bless us. As we move forward in you, and I ask you in Jesus Christ's name, amen. 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 The title of my message is A Vapor. A Vapor. <coughs> what is a vapor? A vapor is a subtle matter, such as smoke or fog, suspended floating in the air, and impairs its transparency. What does our Bible state about a vapor? In James chapter 4, 13 through 15, come now, you say, I mean, you might want to keep that place, but we're going to go back there and then. James chapter 4, verse 13 through 15. Now, come now, you say, tomorrow, today or tomorrow, we will go such and such a city and spend three, we'll spend three years there. Buy and, buy and sell and make a profit, whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow. All right. For what? what is your life? What is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time, then it vanishes away. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we shall live and do this or that. Sometimes I hate hearing this. But I know this is true because the Bible states it in its word. But how would you like to hear it every time I ask you to do something? Pastor Chuck, this is Pastor Jim. I know. How about you and I meeting for breakfast tomorrow? Well, Pastor Jim, you know that the Bible states in James chapter 4, uh, uh. 13... Through 15, come now, you say today or tomorrow, we will go to such and such and such a city and spend a year there, buy and sell and make a profit, whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time, then vanishes away. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we shall live and do this or that. So Pastor Jim, if the Lord wills, I will meet you tomorrow at 8 a.m. Uh, Pastor Jim, how would you take it? Or what would you be thinking if I would say this to you all the time? Sometimes I believe that people say this to get out of get yep. out of things. Yep. Or just don't want to do what, what they have to do, what, what they're doing. Pastor, wouldn't you like to hear the truth from me and say to you, see, I'll see you on Sunday. Or I can't make it because I yep. may be working. I might have to work. It seems like people use God's word as a means of escape. Yep. When you are planning for a trip or some event that is going to happen in the near future, like a cruise, are you going to tell the trip plan that you, are, you can't pay your money until that day because I may not be around? Because my life is nothing but a vapor? Or this may not be the will of God for me? You're either going to pay or you're either going to be left behind. I believe there's nothing wrong with looking ahead, especially if it's in God's plans. Yeah. I'm not saying that this is God's plan for me. Okay? I saw the car that I want. Uh, and hopefully one day I can get it. And it is a Tesla X Model X. Uh, so if somebody out here 
wants to be a blessing for me <laughs> and get me this car, this is what I want. And I want the one that goes from zero to zero to 60 in three to five seconds. So that's the one I want, okay? I'm just letting everybody know, just in case, you know, one day I come to church and there's a nice, if you can, I, I like the white ones. You can get me a nice little red one too. The red is my favorite color. It's nice to have a good time in church. Yeah. So if somebody out here wants, oh, I already said that, the blessing of this party can. But I said this because it's all right to plan for a trip. It's okay. It's okay for me to plan for an electric car in the near future. Our God does not want us to live our lives like we can, this is going to be our last. If this is how you're living, pray. Ask God to help you to learn to live and be happy. I don't know about you guys. I love coming to church. You know, I, um, when Pastor had his operation, you know, I'm like, Pastor, you can, you don't have to come. I got you, Pastor. So no, Chuck, I want to come. I like coming. So he come. He's, he's here. You know, but a lot of us would use that as an excuse why I can't be here. I just had surgery, and um, I just want to relax today. So sometimes it's just, sometimes it's better just to come to church because you don't know what you're going to miss out on. Yep. In Psalms 55, verse 22, cast your burdens on the Lord, and he will sustain you, and he shall never permit the righteous to be moved. But what about all the people that got killed? Don't you ever think like that? The ones that are righteous got killed. The people that go into the churches and shoot them all up. And they was they was their serving God. Hmm. Choices. Who here plans on dying today? Anybody plan on dying today? If you raise your hands, we need to talk. <laughs> no one here plans on death. I hope so. When all those people got killed in those mass killings around the world, do you think they was planning on dying? They was all living their lives, planning on what they would be doing after what they were doing. When those two ladies got stabbed in the next downtown, do you think they was planning on it? No. Yes, each of our lives here are nothing but a vapor. All right. Many people say, here today, gone tomorrow. I know a lot of people say, old people used to say that. But it's, it's funny that <laughs> when the young people hear it, now they're old, now we hear it, we, we say it too. We're getting old. We're getting old. <laughs> Each day. This saying means, which means, what presence or important, what is important now may be absent or irrelevant in the future. But as Christians of God, he wants us to continue to move forward and be his witness. The second part of Acts chapter, Acts chapter 1, verse 8 states, You shall be my witness to me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. When we look at Acts chapter 1, verse 6 through 7, we see that their focus was on when will he restore his kingdom. And he said to them, it is not for you to know the time right. or the season which the Father has put in his own authority. I believe Jesus was telling them not to worry about the future, but to worry about being my witness. All right. In the scheme of it all, we all know that our lives can be taken away from us at a drop of a dime. But let us live and continue to be a witness yep. of the saving grace to others. <coughs> Anybody, anybody have their life flash before their eyes before? I have. But at the time, I wasn't even worried about my life. You know, I know many of you guys that's been here for a length of time, already heard my testimony about the gasoline tanker catching on fire. You know, I, didn't, I, wasn't, I wasn't, at that time, I wasn't thinking about my life. I was, I was thinking about all the lives around me. And it's like one of the scriptures, like, you know, one of the, the greatest things is those who are willing to wait on, lay down their lives for others. You know, instead of me running, because we always was taught during our safety meetings, if our trucks catch on fire, you're supposed to be in thumbs distance. 
and you know the phone is where you can you can barely see it with your phone. Too big to be running at the time. I'm not going to tell you now. But I'm too big to run. I'm Miles Brown just stay there, right? You know, I'm also going to stay there, deal with the fire, try to put it out, or ain't I need to run it because I can't run that fast to get away from my tanker exploding. But my life would have been nothing but a vapors. Everybody in that neighborhood, they would have been going too as well. Hmm. God will keep us. Yes, he will. He keeps us, church. You just don't know. I mean, if you don't know, I always tell people, if you're in a believer in Jesus Christ, you better get there. Especially after the tank, a gasoline tank it catches on fire. Loaded with 8,950 gallons. Hmm. A bomb. We're going to go back to um, the James chapter 4, 13 through 15. Come now, you say, tomorrow, I mean today or tomorrow, we will do such and such in the city. And spend the year there, and buy and sell, and make a profit. Whereas, you do not know what will happen tomorrow, for what is your life. It is even a thing for that appears for a little time, and then it vanishes away. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we shall live and do this or that. In James chapter 4, verse 13, we see a salesman is planning to make him some money, and even, and even put a time frame on it. Who in here sometimes operates like this? All right. You know, who operates like that? You know? I learned one thing. I cannot plan what is going to happen the next minute because something can happen at the drop of a dime. Mm -hmm. Don't make no plans. As soon as I plan to do something, uh, maybe my daughter and my wife have something else in plan. <laughs> I'm like, well, I plan on, you know, that's where communication happens. Yep. And then be like, listen, hey, baby, listen, from starting tomorrow, I'm going to start working back in the basement. So it's like, okay, what's your plans for tomorrow, Chuck? But but if I don't communicate that with her, she's already set me up for something else to do. Or to drop the dime, my daughter, instead of getting up to go to work, she's running late. So, Dad, can you take me to work? See what I'm saying? <laughs> so what happened to my plans of doing what I was going to do? Now i got to take my daughter to work. But that's what dads do. <laughs> no, I'm being honest with you. You know what I mean? <laughs> My plan can be pushed off a little while longer. Yeah. Unless this is the will of God, anything can happen. Yeah. Anything can happen. I know. I know a guy who I work who works on my car. His son was telling me his dad was climbing on a hill with a chainsaw, and he slipped on it while he was while it was running, and almost cut him down to the bone. And the funny thing about it is, I just, let's say I just seen him Monday, a Monday before me and my wife went away on our trip, me and my wife and my daughter went on our trip. That Tuesday, he cut his leg open. Could have bled to death, could have died. Your, our, lives ain't, our lives are not promised to either one of us, none of us in here. We can step off the curb and, yep. and, and get hit by a car, just leave the church. But his leg is so bad, that the doctors don't even want to touch it. I have a driver friend who was telling me about retiring with his wife and traveling with her. Guess what happened? She got old time with disease and he spent the rest of his time caring for her while still working on a job. Right. Stuff is that deep. I have a boss who just lost his wife to cancer. And guess what? She was younger than he was. He was planning on retiring and being with her. Hmm. Our lives. Not promised. I have a friend of mine who's storing up money. And if something happens to him, where will all that money go? He told me, just bury me with it. <laughs> the funny thing about this is that I told him that in Job chapter 1, I didn't, give him the, I didn't give him the chapter and the verse. I just know the verse. And I said to him, naked as I came in from my mother's womb, and naked I shall return. All right. All right. I know he, I, I know. Who you have that person on the job that knows that, he, that these people hate you because you use the Bible to quote scriptures? 
But you're telling the truth, right? Right. You're telling them the truth. So you know what I told him? I will put a check in your grave, and if you wake up and cash it, you can do what you got to do with it. Because you know what? The funny thing about it, he knows the Bible too. Because he said, Chuck, Charlie, because I'm Charlie, Charlie, don't put no check in my grave either. <laughs> you know what he told me? He said, I might be able to buy something in heaven. <laughs> this same driver is driving me crazy, worrying about a contract for us drivers which will take place in May of next year. All right. May of next year. Our focus is all wrong. This is me talking to you. Your focus is wrong. Your focus should be on not a contract for us as drivers. Your focus should be on the coming of the Lord. Uh, what will happen if God cracks open the sky and returns? We're worried about a contract. God might, we might be caught up in the rapture before that contract. So that's my concern. My concern is not no contract. Right. Who cares about a contract? I'm in high demand for my career. Thank you. We can go anywhere and get another truck driving y'all. We worry about some contract. Are you, are you ready for that? Forget that contract. The same way God got me this job is the same way it'll help me get another job. Yep. Mm -hmm. Cussing me out in the back. I know he is. I hate talking to you, Charlie Brown. <laughs> and I know he, he sometimes he gets a hold of Dr. Phil too, Mrs. Brown. And Mrs. Brown gets a hold to him and gets some Dr. Phil talking. But sometimes you need that. Sometimes you need a Christian friend who's going to be real with you. And tell you to stop worrying about things. Stop worrying about what's going to happen tomorrow. My dad was so worried about things going to happen tomorrow, he had a stroke. Do you want to have a stroke worrying about what's going to happen tomorrow? Let tomorrow care for itself. That's in the Bible. Let tomorrow yeah. care for itself. That's so important. Let tomorrow worry about tomorrow. Yes, I did say, um, hopefully tomorrow I can start in the other section of my basement. But that ain't guaranteed that that might happen. I might wake up and say, I'm going to play the game. The commentary Albert Burns states, the apostle here is introducing a new subject and refers to another fault, which was doubtless widespread among them, as it were, as it were, was everywhere, that a presumptuous confidence regarding the future, right? My friends, he says regarding the future. Or the forming of a plan stretching into the future without proper sense and the uncertainty of life or of absolute dependency on God. I don't know about you, when I talk to my friend, I have to depend on God. I have to, because look, being at my job is so depressing sometimes, you have to say, you know what, God, God got my back. Yeah. That's it. If, if, there's, if there's anything, doubt, somebody comes to you with negativity, God got you this job for a reason. God got you on this job to minister. I just, I was sitting outside of my truck, and I told, I told my friend, because he, he, we, we always talk. I, that's what I tell pastors about all the time. We always, but he's always negative. So I said, I start talking to pastors and talking. So I talked, I said, you know what, Wayne? I said, guess what? I said, God has me in the right place at the right time. Right. Right? I'm, out, I'm, I'm sitting there, I'm dropping my gas, minding my own business, and I'm playing my game on my phone, sitting, sitting on, the, on the bars of my truck, dropping my gas, and along comes this guy. And we start talking, and we start talking about stuff, and guess what? God used me to minister to this young man. All right. He starts telling me about how he was in jail, and he knows the scriptures, he knows the Bible. He started quoting scriptures to me. Me and him just had a good old time, but God orchestrated that time to help him to get himself back on track. All right. Timing of God. Yeah. He has this at certain places that... Say if I wasn't at Sunoco anymore, right? If I wasn't at Sunoco, I wouldn't be able to minister to that, that man. I wouldn't be able to tell you my testimony of my truck catching on fire and God saving grace. God has us there for a reason. Remember I was telling my wife about my truck catching on fire. She went and asked about me. Say, did you, did you hear what I just said? My baby, baby, my truck is on fire. I prayed and God, and God released me. So I'm okay. 
Without God, I believe that, that we would all be a vapor or just a spot on somebody's floor. But this is the reason we need to look to God and see what he has for us to do for him as we continue to move forward. In James chapter 4, verse 14, whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow, for what is your life? It's even a vapor that appears for a little time, then vanishes away. There's no one in the Bible that, I mean, there's no one that can see into the future unless it comes from God. Right. When we read our Bibles, we see the different kings calling upon astrolog astrologers, charities, soothsayers, and more. So when you decide that you want to go to um, get your palm read and all that other crazy stuff, they're just like these, these wicked people that the king called upon. If that ain't the man of God, it, it ain't coming from God. It's evil. But they can tell the king, but they could not tell the king what the interpretation was. The right. king had to call upon a man of God, and he was able to interpret and give, tell the interpretation and, or what will happen in the future. And the funny thing about when you read your Bible, you see that, that the king, God was the last one he would call upon to, trans, um, to do some interpretation. If you think about it, every time, I've got to read Daniel too. So every time he had an interpretation, who did he, call, he go back to? He went back to the same thing that he knew before. The soothsayers and the charities. Yep. And he always, instead of just saying, you know what, this same man told the interpretation, I'm going to go to him. But no, he went right back to where he went instead of right. just going straight to the source. The source was Daniel, so Daniel can interpret it because he knew he was a man of God. That's all we do sometimes. Yep. Instead of calling upon God first, yep. we go back to the same thing that we did before. That's right. I remember, I love Pastor. And you know what, me and we was just talking, to, we just, he saw me this uh, Max Laredo thing about sometimes you forget where you come from. So I read it, Pastor. Give me kudos, I read it. And sometimes you forget where we come from. But I always tell Pastor this, that I always store things for a rainy day. I remember the times me and Pastor Mike was together and how we were sitting there eating pork and how we was eating pork and, and uh, we was talking about when, when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, God puts a covering over you because you're like his son. You're his son. He covers you. And I remember the waitress coming over, and, and she even got involved. She was listening to what he had said. I remember that stuff. And I remember Pastor Jim. He said that every time him and Paul made to do stuff in our church, sometimes they forgot to pray. But it was, sometimes it was too late to pray. <laughs> and Pastor Jim was um, him and Bob man was doing something in the ceiling, and he, he ran his finger up in the ceiling with the screen, and he said, back it out, back it out, back it out. So that's what I still I call that stuff. So sometimes if, if they would have prayed first, that may not have happened. <laughs> I don't know, Pastor. I like using Pastor as an illustration. It makes me smile, man. The day Pastor had his incident on his motorcycle, he wasn't planning on this to happen. Well, tomorrow at this time, I will be playing, I plan to be in the hospital and have everybody worry about me. <laughs> no, Pastor was out enjoying the moment. Yep. He was out enjoying the moment. He, he told me the same thing. I bet you if he can back up time, he'd take away that part of the time. I know I would, because I don't want to be injured. But would you really want to back to take that out? Because when Pastor Jim, even in his circumstances, even in the bad times, I see Pastor was even used by God even in his circumstances. Because he was able to minister to somebody while he was balled up in the hospital. A lot of us would might just say, get out of here, don't you see I'm hurt? But God used Pastor Jim even in that instance. And I remember Pastor Jim saying that one song we like to sing, I give myself away. Right? God said, I'm going to check you and see if you're really willing to give yourself away, even in your, your predicament that you're in right now. And he, he passed the test. Who could be balled up in the ambulance and still be a happy camper? <laughs> Pastor Jim. And called his wife. 
Let it be a lesson, then she answered. <laughs> I, I love my wife. She knows I do. But Miss Kathy still answered the phone then. Baby, Aren't you alive? Baby, I'm broke up on the side of her. I'm broke up down, down in the valley, baby. Yeah, I'm still alive, baby. Right. I'm alive and kicking. Amen. <laughs> yes. When I'm dropping my gas, I hook up a small vapor hose so that these vapors don't get in the air and pollute the air. Or so that these vapors don't burst into flames by hitting your hot motor and your exhaust pipes on your bucket. So remember this. When they tell you to turn your gas thing off, your, your, your train car off, turn it off. It's, it's, they want you to turn it off for a reason. You're not supposed to be on your cell phones while you're dropping gas to it. Because it can, it, they say that it can ignite and you'll be a vapor. <laughs> Were you playing games? Yes. Yes, I know. <laughs> I know. Wasn't, but any, there was no vapors around though. I had all that sealed tight though. You know what I'm saying? It's a teachable. You know what my friend says? Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> or, or try spilling some gas on the ground and watch how fast it dries up and turns into vapors. The gas fog is there for a minute or less, and then it vanish away. This is how our lives is. Look at, look at how time is flying. It seems like the hands of clocks aren't stopping. It is what, I mean, it is, that's what time is waiting, I mean, it said that time waits for no man. Yeah. It waits for nobody. Man, that's right here, stop it. You look around and it's, Time is flying. Look at Chantel. Wow. I remember when she came here, she was a little baby. Now look at her. The phrase, time waits for no man, is another way of saying that the passing time is unstoppable and it will march on regardless of what anyone says or does. Yes. Me and my wife, we always talk about, like, well, where's the time? It's like we're sitting down for a minute or we're doing something, we look at the time, it's like, wow, I didn't know we're that late. Last night, we probably went to, at least I laid down about 12 o'clock. I don't know what time she laid down, but I started laying down around 11.30, 12 o'clock. Because I looked at the time and it was gone. The Believer's Bible, the commentary states it like this. It is, it is wrong to plan as if tomorrow was certain. Do not say tomorrow. We do not know what tomorrow will hold. Our lives are frail and unpredictable as a puff of smoke. Our lives, wow, could be snuffed out in a minute. In James chapter 4, verse 15, instead you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we shall live and do this or that. Again, I believe this is this part is so true, but don't use this as a way of saying no. Or you just don't, you just, you just can't do it. Just be straight up, right, Pastor? <coughs> Pastor, I can't meet with you tomorrow. Pastor, I can't read another book. I'm burned out with a brain overload. Or would you rather me say, if the Lord wills, I will read this book. Read those books. Those books. The pastor likes to put some books on you. Right, Art? Or a bunch. <laughs> Read this thick book about this thing. Then give you another book this thing. And then give you this read. Read, read, read. Oh, God. When we went to our family reunion, I didn't want to do nothing. That's work. They want me to think. I want to sit here and not think about nothing. Come on over here, Chuck, and play. No, that requires work. That makes me think. Give you this paper and, and ask you, what do these three people think? What do these three got in common? I don't care what they, I just want to sit and do nothing, just watch. I, sometimes, I, that's what we need. That's why people like fishing. Like my man, he was, my man was telling me about fishing. My dad liked to go fishing just because he relaxed his brain. Don't to do nothing. But I don't want to go fishing if I got to keep catching bluegill and ain't catching nothing. That ain't right. That's work to me because I got the real, I got to put the worm on the hook. I don't want to do nothing. Or pastor, 
Would you rather me say, if the Lord wills, I will read those books, or if the Lord wills, I will meet you tomorrow? If I told you this, more likely we will not meet, I will not meet with him, and I sure will not read them books, any of them books, because I'm using that as an excuse to say, if the Lord wills. Instead of me being straight up with the man and saying, Pastor, I'm not going to do this or that. I don't, I like Pastor, I, I can't. I'm going to be straight up with you and say, Pastor, you know, I might have to work tomorrow, Pastor. So I'm, can I let you know, like on Friday, when before they call me for Monday morning daylight, if we can meet. Okay, Chuck, that's, but we, we really need to meet. We really need to meet. Ain't that what you always say, Pastor? Yeah, exactly. It is. <laughs> so you know I ain't lying. That's what he always true. says. You know, so when I bring the word, don't think in your heart that Pastor Chuck and and Pastor Jim got together and formulated a plan to, 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 to make their, their, their stuff line up together. No, that's not the case. Because me and him haven't met for months. So that's not the case. We haven't even talked on the phone like we did. I, I just started talking to Pastor recently about different plans and stuff. But we haven't been meeting. So you can't say it's, it all has to be all in God's plans. I also believe that this goes hands in hands with our Lord's plan. I mean, our Lord's prayer. Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 through 16. In this manner, therefore, pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be the name. Your kingdom come. Yeah. Your will be done. Right? They got that will, that word will. Yeah. You, that will is important. If you think about that word will right there, it's, in, it's so important because it lines up with we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, but we need to be in God's will. Let your will be done on earth as in heaven. Yeah. Give us our day, our daily bread. And forget and forgive us of our debtors as we forget our debtors. Don't you wish that we can pray that and, and all the debt that we had can be forgiven? <laughs> but do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is, is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Think about it. How it lines up. It lines up with that will. If I'm in God's will, God knows that I'm going to make it to tomorrow. If God puts something on your heart, it's going to happen because it's in God's will. Look at all the, all the all of his disciples as they was going out from amongst them. No matter how the enemy tried to destroy them, he he was they were still walking in the will of God. Some of them got stoned. Some of them one of them got shipwrecked. Some of them got yeah. Some of them even got beheaded, but they still was walking in the will of God. The Believer's Bible Commentary states it like this in uh, <coughs> you know James chapter four verse fifteen. God should be consulted in all of our plans. Yeah. We should be made in his will. We should live and speak in realization that our destinies are in his control. Our, all of our destinies are in his control. All of them. Yeah. We should say, if the Lord wills, we shall live and do this or that. Thus, in the book of Acts, we find the Apostle Paul saying, I will return again to you, God willing. Yeah. <clears throat> Even though I believe that Paul, out of the goodness of heart, he wanted to return, he wanted to return to the people, but he has to say, God willing. I'm going to close. If the Lord wills, this will this will this is proper because we are wholly depending on him. For life and as dependent on him for success. He alone can keep us and he alone can only make our plans successful. All right. In a thousand ways, he can forward, forward our best laid scheme. Yep. And all things are under his control. All things. Think about when you read when you read Job, what do you think about? We we see a, we see an enemy wanting to do him wrong, right? We've seen anyone to do Job wrong, but it had to go through God first. Yep. Read your Bible. So all the bad that's happening, you know the enemy cannot do it without going through, the, through God first. Well, why would I want to serve a God that allow innocent people to die? I'm not God. 
God is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Yep. He knows all things. I'm not trying to take my little marvel and, and try to figure out God. His thoughts, is, the Bible says his thoughts is, is way off, is higher above my thoughts. Yep. So why am I going to try to compete with his thoughts? I'm not trying to be on his level. I'm not trying to be Lucifer and get on, try to be like God. I don't want to get kicked out of heaven before I even get there. We need, we need not travel far in life to see how completely all that we have is in God's hand and learn how easy he can frustrate us if he pleases. Yeah. Oh, he can frustrate us. <laughs> you know, I don't, everybody's different. I mean, I was talking to Allison about how I couldn't eat that cookie thing. And I said, if I eat that cookie, I'm going to go back. But this is so easy. One cookie for me, at the, at the time when I was doing my diet real heavy, is, is rough. Can we say that? I saw some cookies in the back. This guy thing was like, you can have some. I was like, no. You just don't know. If I can hold one cookie, it's over. It's just like Pringles. I just can't have one. Okay? So we were at my family reunion, and they had my coolers there that I used to drink a long, long time ago. They had my, um, my coolers. I like them. Oh, man, I love them. They was, uh, they had, they, I know what, I forgot what they was, but they had my coolers there that I like. And it was like, Chuck, you can go get some, you can go get some. I was like, listen, I don't drink no more. Because even though my uncle knows that I don't drink no more, it's always that test to see where you're still standing. And I'm like, okay, I'm not drinking. Once God gave me that beating, there is no turning back. There is no turning back. I don't know about you guys. Have you ever got a, a pounding on by God? You'll never go back to wherever you was at before. And God pounded me. When I was drinking, and I promised him, I vowed I wouldn't do it no more, and I'll never go back. Everybody was drinking, and I mean, it was nice. Everybody had a good time. But I had a good time, too, without even putting alcohol in my mouth. Right. Right. I, I had a good time. And then my wife, the same way. She was there with me. She had a good time. We had, we laughed, we joked. I even, a lot of times I believe, like, in order for me to get my groove on and start dancing and do stuff, I have to have a little crunk juice up in me, which is alcohol. For those who don't know, it seems like I have to have a little bit of, the need call it, courage juice. You know what I mean? A little courage juice. You know? But I didn't have to. I was, I was you know, because because the beat had me going. I was okay. I didn't have nothing to drink but but some pop. And then after a while, I stopped drinking the pop because I, they had some uh, some um, iced tea over there. But you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm just saying you don't have to have a good time. You don't have to have a good time to have alcohol and drugs in. When we come to when we come to friends and family, there's no alcohol downstairs, right? We all have a good time. We either watch the movie, or playing the game, or eating. And sometimes we be like, "Oh, I'm so glad this is just us. We got all this chicken to ourselves." You know? But but I'm just saying we, we we have a good time though, right? Even when the men meet together, you know, we have a good time. And I know the women they have, they're they're on a whole other level than us. They stick around, they chit chat, even 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 when the crickets start making noises. But they're having a good time. It's about fellowship. So I, I mentioned that to say, if if you are not involved in men's fellowship, get involved. If you ain't in the women's fellowship, get involved. Or if you don't come to friends with them, get involved. It's about fellowship. There is nothing in which the success of our plan depends on which we have absolute control. There's nothing there for on which we can base our, our assurance of success but, but this favor. I know one plan that God has for all of us, and that is for us to be his witness yeah. for him today and as long as we live on God's green earth. Yeah. You know, I, I made a comment that we can't see into the future. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, but I can I know from the, what happened in the past, I know what happened in the present, and I know it's what happened in the future. God still wants us to be his witness. All right. We can, we can rest assured because that's in God's plans. So we already know by that being God's plans, we already know he wants us to be his witness. Yes. We want people, he wants us to go out today, tomorrow, and forever, and continue telling us about his son Jesus. We know that part. But if you need prayer, if anyone intends to worry about what's going to happen tomorrow, let me pray with you. God is in everything. 
And that and that's what we need to know so we can continue moving forward. Just be in his will and not fall away. So if you want to stand in need prayer, if you haven't accepted Jesus Christ in your Lord and personal Savior, come. Let's pray. But if you need prayer for anything, come. Father, we just thank you, Lord God, that we are not a spot on the carpet yet, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that, that we are we still have a pulse and we're not dead yet. And Lord God, just pray right now, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. As long as we can come to you, Lord God, we still have an opportunity to continue serving you. And I just pray right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you continue to have your way in and through each and every one of our lives. Help us to be strong. Help us, Lord God, to get ready for the battle ahead. But, Lord God, with you, Lord God, all things are possible. Yes. And just help us, Lord God, to continue to be the people of God that you have called us to be. Lord God, I know you said, where two or three are gathered, here you are in the midst. And there's more than two and three up in here, Lord God. And we know that you're here with us right now. We have a lot of people who need prayer. I just ask you right now, Lord God, to continue to interview in their situation, help deliver them from their sickness or anything they're dealing with, Lord God. And I just ask you this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. And keep us safe as we leave to go home. And don't forget, Blood Pressure Sunday. If you need your blood pressure check, huh? Oh, okay. If you need blood pressure check, we got two nurses on standby that's willing to check you out, check your blood pressure.